Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. Today's Monday. I've got the day off. Just relaxing. I thought I would do a video about a vintage set. Um, just too tired today. The live stream last night was awesome. We went about 90 minutes, which was longer than I expected. I still haven't seen my, where I topped out with number of people uh, concurrently viewing, but the highest I saw was 92, which was um, the last one I had, I think it was 64. So getting better with these live streams, I, I think I'd like to do maybe one a month, just do a live stream and figure out something to do in each one. Last night I opened three blasters, or actually three hangers of 2023 tops. I love the design this year. It's very, very cool. It's the best design in a long time, in my opinion. Here's the Stars of MLB card. So I continue to not rip wax that I have purchased because I'm not buying any in 2023, but somebody gave me these three hangers. Uh, and one good thing about 2023 is that they've made it a lot easier to tell if you've got a, shoot, a, a short printed card. In the past, you know, you'd have to really squint and look with a magnifying glass at a code on the back, but now they've just put it, they've given a few other hints to make it a lot clearer. I did not receive any short prints or super, sh super short prints. Uh, say that five times fast, but that's okay. It was fun ripping them throughout the, the live stream. And I gave away three cards from the 1960s. I have yet to hear from Aaron. He may not have watched. I need to go back and respond to him, make sure he knows that he won. Heard from the other two guys. I haven't responded yet, but uh, I will. And I'll get those out this week. So this today's video topic comes to me from, comes to us from longtime subscriber and great contributor to the community, Robert Sagetti. Uh, I had to ask him how to pronounce his last name because I'd never seen it before. So Robert posed the question of what is a true collector? Is a true collector somebody who got obtained all of their cards from opening packs? I'm gonna pause here just for a moment to say there's no right or wrong way to collect. So collect what you like, how you like, it does not matter to me. This is just a, an interesting conversation. Ripping wax, and so this is, a, it's a good topic for today since I just ripped from last night and I'm still saying I'm not gonna buy any in 2023. And, uh, I think Robert poses a great question that I want to ask you. Is a true collector somebody who never who never buys singles? So they've, they've amassed their collection just from ripping wax. And then that brings up a lot of questions too. And I immediately thought back to a Chasing Cardboard episode from a few weeks ago where Ty goes to um, uh, buy a collection from a guy who has a, mostly NFL cards and he had amassed this collection strictly through opening packs. And Ty said, wow, I really respect that. You, uh, you bought all these packs yourself and ripped them all. And he, he definitely said that he respected it more. So some questions here. Does a true collector ever sell anything? Or do they just collect the cards they want? I almost never sell anything, but I do sell occasionally. And I'm about to send off probably a couple hundred cards to comp C to sell below comp just to get them out of my collection. Uh, I'll let you guys know when, when I've done that. And if you want to look at my, the cards I'm trying to sell because they don't fit what I'm looking to collect because I'm looking to have uh, a very focused collection. And that's one thing when you're just opening packs and keeping all those cards is you have a very diverse collection and it by definition, really can't be focused unless your focus is to have something of everything, which is, it's a tough concept. So one good thing about ripping wax is that you have a better chance, especially if you buy retail, of building a set. I, last year, I bought a lot of 2022 tops. I was able to build a tops set that way. Um, this, just from three hangers, that's all the commons, just the commons from 2023 tops from three hangers. And then I have all of the rookies and future stars and inserts and things like that here. So you can see easy to buy, a, easy to complete a set 
by buying uh, wax and especially if you're including retail hobby boxes I think have fewer commons that you're gonna get in there the hobby boxes of course you're gonna get more hits and your your collection will be more valuable but does that value outweigh what you're paying for those hobby boxes in 2023 now if you were uh, opening boxes in 2013 and you're looking at the value of those cards now you probably have a pretty good collection and so then you have to say well in 2033 if you're opening 2023 boxes now will those cards be worth a lot more i think that the hobby needs to grow pretty significantly for you your uh the value of your cards to go up uh enough to offset the cost of the boxes because fanatics tops panini are are making their boxes so expensive that the cards inside inherently can't have that much value unless you get very very lucky and that's the thing if you buy a lot of boxes if you are backyard breaks and you're you're opening a ton of boxes you're gonna get lucky sometimes it's just a lot of ripping and most of your cards you, you look at um, pac-man for instance he just last night opened two packs two cards in each pack all four cards numbered to eight so pretty big hits there no more than eight of any of these four cards but i think he said he paid five hundred dollars for each pack so a thousand dollars for four cards or maybe it was five hundred dollars total for the two packs four cards either way none of those cards was good all of them despite being numbered eight were not true hits ray allen was the best one but that's certainly you're not making up your money with a ray allen card so it's it's ah man it's so tough to think about how do you make your money back and maybe that's the difference is a true collector doesn't need to make their money back they're going to spend ten thousand dollars a year and never worry about what their collection is worth and i appreciate that i don't think a lot about the value of my collection but i do want my collection to be worth something so that when i'm ready to sell it in 30 years because i'm not going to pass it down to my family when i'm ready to sell it i get decent money for it and can pass that money down to my family but if you're spending ten thousand dollars a year and i'm just throwing a random number where you could say a thousand or or a hundred dollars and those cards that you pulled out of there are only worth two thousand dollars because you're you're unlucky or maybe you have the normal amount of luck uh, i don't know it's, it's tough also, if you want to collect a specific player, um, I'm a big Raphael Devers collector. It's tough to collect a specific player if you're just whipping, r ripping wax because you're going to get every player from every team and your chances of getting any specific player are the same as any other player. Whereas if you're buying singles, you go to card shows, you go on eBay, you can buy whatever cards you want. If you're setting aside the rookie cards, the vast majority of them are probably going to be worth less in 10 years because most rookies never become anything but if you take the rookie cards out and you sell them right away you uh you're probably not going to get a big julio rodriguez rookie that you still have in 10 years if you're selling them if you are a ripper collector are you keeping all the commons do you even like the commons i think true collectors like the commons they they look at them and you appreciate a great photo. And then you try to build a set. So then if you're thinking about your collection and you're trying thinking about trying to sell like that guy on Chasing Cardboard did, how organized is your collection? Is it documented? Is it labeled in boxes? Is it or is it all over the place? And is that a true collector where you don't think about the organization of the collection? I am not as organized as I would like to be with my collection, but I will get there. As soon as I have as soon as I have the space, I will have a much more organized collection. Does your collection, can your collection, if you're a true collector and you are only ripping wax, does that include breaks? So can you buy into breaks and have that and still be a true collector? I don't know. That's a that's a gray area. It's a I don't know how to answer that one. 
And then you have to wonder if you are only ripping packs, what is the hook when you go to sell your collection? Like that guy in Chasing Cardboard had a lot of modern and ultra modern football cards and autographs. But what's the hook when, when somebody comes to buy and look at it? What are they sinking their teeth into? Like if you think about Uncle Jimmy, the Uncle Jimmy collection I just did a video on a week or so ago now, his hook was that he did through the mail autographs for decades and he had this unbelievable autograph collection. Dimitri Young had a rookie collection of PSA 10s and the Dimitri Young collection is famous now. Like he sold a Reggie Jackson, the pop one Reggie Jackson rookie for I think over a million dollars. And people want to get in on the, the Dimitri Young collection and have that on the D PSA label. Like the Uncle Jimmy collection, the Black Swamp Find collection, which is a little different, of course. When I think about my collection, I want vintage rookie cards and I want rookie card autographs and in, in person autographs. And that, that's what I love. That's what I want to collect. And when I think about collecting in 30 years and how many of these cards I'll have, it's, uh, that's my hook, I think, is people will say, wow, check out this amazing collection of rookies and rookie autographs. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know. Uh, I, I anticipate putting out another video on Wednesday of this week. Click subscribe if you're new here. I've got uh, pretty much daily sports card content. I want to start doing shorts again, but I will not be doing one tomorrow because I'm going into the office. Another Attic Fine Friday, back to baseball this week, and then more videos over the weekend too. I appreciate you guys watching, and thanks again for stopping in for that live stream last night. Have a great day.